What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we're going to have a little look at a story that came out a few years ago where a great white shark drowned a humpback whale. We're going to see some pretty epic footage of the incident itself and also discuss some other stories of sharks taking down whales over the years. And I'm going to give you all my thoughts on it from a shark science perspective. Before we start though, I'd like to ask a little favour of you. Every time I have a break between the Shark Bites seasons, the YouTube algorithm seems to hate me when I come back. So to try and beat this, please, please do give the video a like and comment as well. By liking and commenting on this video, you're telling the mysterious YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying this content, and that means YouTube's gonna show it to more people. Weirdly, sometimes even when you're subscribed to the channel, the YouTube algorithm doesn't even show you when we release new videos. So by liking and commenting on this particular video, you're helping me get back into other people's timelines, so thank you. Right. Sharks and whales, let's jump in. So we know that sharks are opportunistic predators and are also big into their scavenging, that's a given. We've got loads of clips on the internet of all kinds of sharks feeding on whale carcasses, so it's pretty clear that they play an important role in their diet. Scientists even think that in the Atlantic Ocean, the diet of an adult great white shark is largely made up by whale carcasses. And whales even determine white shark migration patterns. Research has shown that white sharks will actually move away from seal colonies at certain times of the year to migrate alongside the humpback whales. That shows right there to move away from a place where food is really abundant, like a seal colony, to then following humpback whales, the whales must play an important role in their diet. Previously, we thought that white sharks might be following the whales to wait for the older ones to die before coming in then and scavenging off the carcass. But that thought process completely changed back in 2017 when scientists witnessed an unbelievable predatory interaction between these two species. And then it was confirmed again in 2020 with some epic drone footage. So first I'll talk to you about the research paper that those scientists wrote and then we'll have a look at the confirmation drone footage. On the 17th of February 2017, a seven meter long humpback whale was spotted off the point in Mossel Bay, clearly in distress as it had become entangled in derelict fishing gear. The scientists investigating this realized that the humpback whale had probably been entangled for quite a long time based on the lacerations that were in its skin from the fishing rope and also due to the poor skin quality on the dorsal side of the whale which would suggest that particular whale was not able to dive down. Shortly after after spotting the whale, the team also saw a three and a half meter white shark, which began circling the humpback before then biting on the left pectoral fin. It didn't perform the usual behavior that we might see from a white shark feeding on a humpback carcass, you know, that kind of head thrashing behavior and rolling their eyes back. Instead, the shark literally latched onto the pectoral fin, immediately letting go without taking any muscle or blubber from that fin. But what it did do was release a load of blood from the bite area. The shark held back for about 40 minutes or so, waiting before eventually coming back, and this time deciding to bite towards the tail of the whale. And it did the same biting technique as it did the first time round, which was latching on, immediately letting go, not removing any muscle or blubber, but releasing a large amount of blood from that wound. At this point, a second and much larger white shark showed up and decided to bite the humpback whale on the tail again, in exactly the same way that the first individual had been biting. The smaller shark disappeared as soon as the second shark decided to show up, which is a pretty cool demonstration of that dominance behavior for larger individuals. As soon as a bigger shark shows up, that shark is now in charge, and essentially that shark owns that humpback whale meal. After another 30 minutes or so, the larger shark bit the whale on the tail again, this time more rigorously shaking its head back and forth. And it looked like, to the researchers anyway, that this particular shark was trying to push down that whale underneath the surface of the water while it was biting it. Finally, after this fourth bite, the whale sank and the larger shark patrolled the area for another few minutes before eventually heading down below. The whale was actually spotted a few days later where the scientists were able to confirm that it was the same individual based on the rope entanglements and the positions of the bites on the body. So based on the account by these scientists, we can see that the two sharks that decided to bite this whale were performing the bite and spit technique. This is a predatory technique used by white sharks where they will bite their intended target before letting go and retreating whilst letting that prey species slowly bleed out. It's a pretty grim predatory technique when you think about it really, but it's used by white sharks because it's probably the safest thing for them to do and avoids them getting injured by that prey species. Normally they'd be doing this to seals which have pretty sharp claws that can definitely damage a white shark. So by biting and then retreating they're ensuring that they're not getting hurt by a prey item that's in distress. It's cool to see them using this strategy with an animal like a humpback whale, which could still easily cause damage to a white shark purely based from a size perspective. But what's even cooler is that by using this bite and spit technique, it shows us as scientists that this wasn't a scavenging event. When white sharks are scavenging on whale carcasses, they'll latch on and shake their head back and forth, ripping off chunks of flesh and blubber to consume it. But when they're actively predating on something that's still alive, they'll use this bite and spit technique to minimize their risk of getting hurt. So it shows us here that this isn't a 
scavenging event. It's actually an active predation event. Okay, so there is a point to make here about the humpback whale, which was already tired and injured. So in some ways you can sort of see how this might still fall under the category of a scavenging event, but that whale was well and truly still alive when the shark started biting. In reality, for me, it's probably somewhere in the middle between a scavenging event and an active predation attempt. So the scientists in question, Sasha Dines and Enrico Gennari, collected their data and wrote the paper, and it was released in January 2020. Little did they know, a very similar incident would be captured on film a mere few months later. Ryan Johnson, another marine biologist, managed to capture the incident on film with a drone, and it all pans out very similarly to the first incident back in 2017. Right. Right, should we have a look at some of the footage? Okay, so we've not got much of this footage available, so I'll just stick it on a loop for you guys. Anyway, it's clear here this humpback whale again has become entangled in some derelict fishing gear, so we know it's definitely injured and tired. But the shark in question, which was actually identified as a shark known as Helen, who was previously tagged in 2013, performs a very similar predatory strategy to take down this whale. Here you can see her biting onto the tail ridge of the humpback before retreating back for about 30 minutes to allow that whale to bleed out. So this is the bite and spit technique that I was talking to you about. So we don't have video footage of this next part, but we do have a still image here where Helen comes back to the whale for a second attack, biting onto the side of the head and attempting to drag the whale's blowhole under the water to drown it. It would be pretty interesting to know if Helen was one of the sharks that was responsible for targeting that humpback whale in Mossel Bay back in 2017, although to my knowledge, the scientists weren't able to get a positive ID on either of those two sharks. But the way that Helen is attacking this humpback here is eerily similar to the description given by the scientists who witnessed the 2017 incident. It's almost as if she knows exactly what she's doing and knows exactly the method of how to do it. Admittedly, in the 2017 attack, neither of those two sharks attempted to actively drown the hump back towards the head and blowhole region, so you could say this is a slightly different technique. Regardless though, in both cases, the sharks in question appeared to know exactly what they were doing. And this likely tells us that this interaction between these two species has probably been going on for a long time before we managed to document it. Now, really interestingly, this isn't the first time that sharks have been documented actively trying to take down live whales. Back in 2001 in New Caledonia in the South Pacific, two bull sharks were witnessed following and repeatedly biting a blue whale, drawing large amounts of blood from that whale before it eventually sank. And then in 2014, some crazy footage was released of a group of around 10 to 20 dusky sharks attacking a humpback whale calf in Port John's, South Africa. The duskies repeatedly took bites out of the left-hand flank of the whale calf, and you can really see the damage it's done to the left side of the body along the back. The bites being more to towards the back and dorsal region of the shark is probably due to that humpback whale banking its back towards those predators in a defensive strategy. But you can also see the pure number of bite marks towards the tail of the whale calf. And again, that's just confirming that theory that sharks try to immobilize large prey items like whales by biting at the tail region. Because without the use of that tail, that whale is gonna have a real hard time swimming around. Anyway, this attack apparently happened over the course of around six and a half hours before the whale dived and didn't resurface, where it was presumed to have died from its injuries. Interestingly here, we can see the duskies are attacking this humpback in a relatively large group, which is quite different to those white shark incidents in 2017 and 2020. Obviously, even a humpback whale calf is still too big of a prey item for a single dusky shark to take down on its own, but when you throw 10 to 20 of them into the mix, the tide starts to turn. Those dusky sharks are probably all still around two or three meters in length, so they're not small sharks, and 10 to 20 of them are easily capable of doing some real damage to a whale calf. I think that video we've just watched there is a pretty clear example of cooperative hunting in dusky sharks, which is really cool to see. Duskies are generally solitary hunters, and more often than not, they'll tend to keep themselves to themselves. Although during the sardine run, which was happening when that incident was filmed, duskies do aggregate in pretty large groups. So it's interesting to think that perhaps when they do gather in those large groups, that cooperative hunting is taking place. I think the hunting strategies of sharks is an incredible thing. And later on in this season of Shark Bites, we're going to be taking an in-depth look into the variety of different hunting strategies that sharks use. If you're watching this episode a little bit later on in the Shark Bites season, then make sure you stick around to the end screen of this video where you'll be able to watch that video we do on shark hunting strategies. For the rest of you keen bean Shark Bites fans, you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer to see that one. Anyway, that's enough from me then today. I want to hear what you all think about these incidents. Mostly I want to know if you guys think that Helen was the shark responsible for the 2017 incident as well as the 2020 incident. So let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. By doing so, you're letting YouTube know that you're enjoying Shark Bites and that you want to see more of it. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. And that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.